Hello everyone and welcome back to the Super Mega Cast. This is episode 83. Now this is actually the 83rd episode. Matt screwed up last time and said it was the 83rd. It was not the 83rd. The this 82nd. is the 83rd. I uh yeah, I um, made it, I made you, oops. You, you really fucked up this time. But we got a special guest with us. We do. Very special guest. Little man that uh well not a, well, a I, when a I said little man, a little I didn't tiny man. <laughs> he's about he's about 3 foot he's, 8. He's the world's tiniest man. We brought I'm him a in here. Man. <laughs> he he hops from shoulder to shoulder when he needs to use the mic. He's he's sitting on my right shoulder right now. <laughs> if he wants to climb over, he can get on Ryan's left shoulder. I'm climbing. Here we <laughs> are, go. but but we got we got we got our we got our good friend uh, Nathan Yaffe here. Say hey, Nathan. Hi, hi. I'm a little man uh, named Nathan Yaffe. And, uh, <laughs> I'm here on the podcast. It's, you've got very comfortable shoulders, guys. Uh, thank thanks. you, thank you. I've been thank trying to pad it. mine out with some muscle. It's you it's know, not I'm, easy, but. Yeah, it's 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 feeling good. Um, you know, I've I've perched on many a shoulder in my time, and uh, I gotta say, top top ten shoulders. Oh, thanks, here. man. Well, actually, yeah. uh, Nathan um, personally reached out to us and requested to be on the podcast because he wanted to go into detail about the last time he had sex. So, Nathan, if you'd like to, yeah, cont- go on. Um, <laughs> uh, it was good. Cool. Well, cool. thanks yeah, awesome. so much, yeah, Nathan. Awesome. Uh, it was a good uh, thanks time. for coming it was, on, it man. Was great I having just, you on the I podcast. S- spread that as. Far and wide as I can, uh, it's good. It's a good time. <laughs> hey, and you know what? While we're talking about this, I think it's there could not be a more perfect time to thank our sponsor. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Beach Body On Demand. It's an online fitness streaming service that gives you unlimited access to a wide variety of highly effective world-class workouts personalized to meet your needs. Do you want to be ripped like your favorite Let's Players, Matt Watson and Ryan McGee? If so, then you should use Beachbody On Demand. It's got tons of familiar brands like P90X, Insanity, 21 Day Fix, 3 Week Yoga Retreat. They're all great. I've tried some of them. I've had a great time with Beachbody On Demand. Ryan's been doing yoga. I've been doing the the P90X stuff. It hurts real bad, but it feels good. And the best thing about Beachbody is that it's convenient. convenient. It's very convenient. No need to go to the gym or schedule a class. Everything is right there on your personal device. I've actually been trying Beachbody to try to... You know, pack on those pounds, Ryan. To look good. I need to look good. You gotta look famous, too. I have to look, f- I have to fit that famous, that famous Let's Player slash Podcaster look. You know, I, uh, I've actually gained a little bit of weight. Oh, nice. Thank you. Traveling? You can do workouts in your hotel room. No time. Beachbody On Demand has workouts that range from 10 minutes to over one hour. And Beachbody On Demand has programs for any fitness level. You got yoga, low impact, even dance. And you also got cardio and weight training. Over 600 different workouts. And you can sort them by type of workout or favorite trainer. If you got a trainer, you got a crush on. Hey. They know that working out is just a part of the equation. That's why they provide comprehensive nutrition plans to help you meet your goals. That means they have access to information on meal prep, variety of recipes, and simple but proven eating plans. Ryan's stepdad has been using Beach Body On Demand and he's already gained over 300 pounds of muscle. Now that's a man I'd want to see. Well, you can. He's your stepdad. You can see him anytime. You should yeah. probably give him a call because he's been reaching out to me asking why you haven't been t- contacting him. So. Beachbody is also affordable. You can try this amazing program, all 600 workouts and nutritional information for free. Plus, your annual subscription is cheaper than a gym membership. Right now, our listeners can get a free trial membership when you text SUPER to 303030. That's 303030. You'll get full access to the entire platform for free. All the workouts and nutritional information for free. Just text SUPER to 303030. Want we'll to try that again? Yeah. SUPER to 30... God come on. Okay. SUPER to 303030. 30, 30, 30. There you That's go. That's SUPER to 30... 30. I thought you were going to say 303030, 30, 30, but... Th- it- you guys and, got it. It's yeah. in the description. It's it's plus good. that goof probably helped you remember it. Yeah, you go thirty thirty thirty. Maybe 30. Made, made it more confusing. Yeah. What a lovely read. What did you think of it, Nathan? Um, I think they'd be a fool to not sponsor you again. Thank you, Thank Nathan. I uh, yeah. You did just call our sponsor a fool. Um, <laughs> if so we're if have they to ask don't sponsor you, to... you again, <laughs> they're not fools for continuing to sponsor you. Okay, that's fair enough. You fair s- enough. Saved it there. That's good. Very good. Okay. Yes. Very good. <laughs> but yeah, Nathan, uh, he does a little show called Drawfee, um, which Ryan and I uh, were recently um, actually in terms of like this podcast coming out. I'm not sure which is which is which is coming out first, or if they're coming out around the exact same time. But uh, Drafi is a YouTube channel. They do a show. Um, I'm sure many of you listeners have seen Doodle Dudes. Uh, it's it's like the OG Doodle Dudes. It's uh it's very similar. It's a drawing 
podcast. Uh, so Ryan and I re- recently on an episode of that, so you can go check that out. What was the subject? Yeah. Come on. It was a good fun. It was a good fun time. We did knock off Simpsons characters. Absolutely. It doesn't get much better we, than we that. We created a great family. We hope you guys enjoy it. It was so much fun. Um, it, it really is like... I, I was looking at it after we finished drawing, and I was actually thinking to myself, like, if these were the real characters on The Simpsons, I would watch that show religiously. The, <laughs> the, the best way I could describe how all of our characters looked, it looked like a show that would come on after Squid Billies on Adult Swim. <laughs> yeah, it, it definitely had some Squid Billies vibe <laughs> to it. Uh, I feel like a lot of the stuff we draw feels that way, just sort of, just sort of gross and, like, dis- disproportioned and... Uh, yeah, me- messy, messy fun time. That's the having... that's the best art style for drawing. Like I, my whole life, I can't think of an art style I love more than like crude, like yeah. disproportionate, grotesque like cartoons. I can only draw it's... like a child, so you can only yeah, can a... you draw a child? Or you draw like a child. Well, I mean, I can do both <laughs> if you want me to. I'd like to see you draw a child like a child. <laughs> what would through the... the eyes of a child? Would that just be like a stick figure? <laughs> When you, when you guys were growing up, when you would draw, like when you were a young kid and you would draw, um, no, I I draw a, a meaty man, a big meaty man, a big meaty man. How about I mean, you know, you draw probably every second of your life, Nathan, right? Yeah, yeah, every second. If I'm drawing right now, when, how, how you can't when he's not see it. <laughs> how did you yeah. learn to draw a proportionate person? Like, what was the hardest part about drawing a proportionate person? Um, here's the thing: legs, they're too long. They're too long to draw. Um, they always so go off the paper when he tries to draw. They them. always go, just like, what do yeah, I do? <laughs> just don't. Yeah, just do do the the Rob Lee Field method. Method. Uh, cover them up. Uh, put go have them go off the page. Put them behind uh, an object. Put them behind. Rip other the people. paper in half where the legs Rip, begin. And just say, yeah, just hey. tear it up. Yeah, before and my dog digital. Ate it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the dog ate the legs. Hey. Yeah. Like when when I was a kid. I don't know if I mean Nathan. You're obviously a very talented artist. When I, I don't Thank know you. if when you like, I, I feel like a lot of people do this. But when I was a kid, when I would draw people, I would draw like mm-hmm. the head. I would draw the person, right. and then I would draw the arms and the legs coming out of the head. So there was no right. torso or body. It was just like it was like a it's like a Pac Man. Yeah, it was like a head, and then like long legs and arms coming out of. Of the head. Did yeah. you do that's that? Kind of. You're kind of describing what we drew on the yeah. uh, on, on the, the episode. episode. That's like Hunter <laughs> Samp, dude. Yeah, dude. Yeah, yeah. Uh, spoilers, but um, <laughs> yeah, I think. Well, it, it was interesting because yeah, I growing up, I I had a hard time doing cartoons because I I really like details and trying to draw as realistically as possible. And so I actually learned a lot of my cartooning techniques from my friends who were less good, like traditionally good artists, but uh, I would see the ways that they would try and simplify forms, and I said, oh, that's fun. I'll try that. Yeah, man. Give, I, give that a, I, give I, that a I, shot. I really wanted to take, like, because I recently, uh, when I was back home um, visiting my parents for the holidays, I was going through some of my old um, drawings and, like, books I had created as a kid. Which sure. I do have to say, I was quite the uh, wordsmith. I wrote um, a short book of stories, and one of them was Ooh. literally, uh, "Do not launch missiles; they are bad." And and like it took up an entire page. <laughs> that's, that's it was more I of mean, like a warning hey, than that's a story. Pertinent, <laughs> no, pertinent no nowadays nuclear missiles have been launched. Yeah, that's since true. Then. Since since I wrote that story, no nuclear missiles have been launched. So I so. guess. They were taking your advice. Yeah, but uh, I did find some of those drawings I did where it was just like the the head with the scribbly hair and like the arms and legs. And I really would like to do a hyper realistic like oil painting of some like a portrait oh, where yeah, it's very realistic that, limbs yeah. and and the head, but it's just they're just coming out of the head like that. And I'd love to see that. The portions are all that that'd be fun. Yeah. Like I just want to take my childhood drawings and then you, recreate them as you, like hyper hyper realistic. Are you are you asking me to to do that for you? Is that is, that might be that veiled? Is that your snide little? That might be a veiled. Like, come on, Nathan. Maybe. You, maybe. Like, come on, Nathan. Come I mean, on, buddy. You can draw. Draw and, uh, I mean, You can and draw. We're friends, yeah, right? Send, send it over. <laughs> send it over. I'll get started right away. Thank you. I, I request it to be in mural form. Um, oh, for sure. Yeah, I'll put it put it up on uh, the the closest building to where <laughs> can, I am. Can right you now. pay for shipping and handling as well? That would really help me out, buddy. Uh, ooh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Definitely, definitely. Okay, I mean, that's. That's Nathan, what I'm here for. our channel has yeah. been in decline. We don't have the money to pay for shipping and handling, but we really need this, man. Please come through. Our sponsors aren't even paying us anymore. I don't know why we're they they severed all ties. I don't Except know why we're sponsoring been... this video. Who's so gracious to sponsor us? 
Uh, yeah, they the sponsor did. that I called a fool for. They're also they're also <laughs> paying us. They're paying us in, no. in milk bones. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The dog treat. I don't know why. I mean, that's that's. Oh a, yeah, that's a fine point. Yeah. We, we took it though. I don't know why we well, agreed you, to that, what, but what you got to do is use a dog shipping service, and then you can pay them in milk bones. It's like the Pony Express with dogs. Yeah. Gee, thanks, it's, sir. Uh, the plot of the movie Balto. You guys remember Balto? <laughs> Balto's a good movie, okay? Yeah. It's really good. You got you got the one the one polar bear that talks like this all the time. And you got you got the goose. They got the funny the goose, goose. The goose with the Russian accent, yeah. You got the live action old lady. Right. That part at the beginning that they, they don't come back to. Yes. They do not come back to the live action part. Like they premise it like this is a story a lady's telling her daughter, and then you think maybe at the end... Does it not end back with, like, the statue and the credits start rolling out the live-action statue as they're walking away? Does it? Maybe it does. I I, I don't know. What, what, <laughs> I haven't whatever. seen it in a while. Whatever. Balto... It's just, I'm just imagining that, but instead of delivering life-saving medicine, it's delivering these drawings that you made <laughs> to me. Like this, so like nine foot a... by by six foot, like portrait of of, yeah. a, of a hyper realistic, like deformed, <laughs> like figure. And I've never yeah. seen Balto. Like I, I never actually heard you of it until just now. But listening to the way you guys describe it, I don't know. I, like I'm trying to piece this together. I, there's like a goose with a Russian accent, a polar bear with a high pitched voice. There's a scary ass black bear. There's a, there's a live with red eyes. Right? It has red eyes. I think. I don't know. All I know is it's a big scary black bear, and it's the it it. It's the most terrifying bear sequence in a children's film. Is it the most terrifying right. bear sequence see, in now, any film? No. Is that no? Now see that I is that's not that's not the fox and the hound. No. The, no, no, no. No. Balto run, runs runs there, into a big old bear. A, there's a terrifying bear sequence in that too. Let me Balto bear. I'm just googling now. I think the bear falls through oh, ice yeah, or something. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. They're they're cute little polar bears, and then there's a big scary yeah yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah I'm yeah. gonna show Matt this scary Balto bear. That's a show me, man. It, Look at this shit. Ha! Look how fucking scary this bear Stop. is. Stop! It's all big get it off the meaty. screen. Like that bear has no soul. That's creepy, dude. He's buff too. But here's God the thing. Here, here's the thing about that bear, man. He's not trying to like cause ill on anyone. He's well, just I mean, trying, he's trying to, to kill them. He's well, he's yeah, but he it's not it's not out of malice. You know, he's trying to survive, just like you and I, man. That is true. The bear in Balto, if you remember, Nathan, does not speak yes. anything. He just, right. he it's, just, he's, he, I guess he's mentally impaired it's in the survival universe instinct. of Balto. Like a it's violent, could, mentally could impaired person. He doesn't person. speak, uh, he doesn't speak English, doesn't speak animal he English. Just, yeah, he just speaks, okay, yeah, yeah, I like, could I like. speak Portuguese or something. Okay. Just doesn't, does not understand. So you're saying that in the universe of Balto, that they act like the toys of Toy Story, wherever they're near humans, they have to be like, shh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. Rough, well, rough. In, in Toy what? Story, why could they not speak around you? Like, what was the big deal? Uh, the children would freak out and flush them down the toilet or something. That's I'm sure. probably true. Well, like, dude, if yeah. I was a kid and my toys started talking to me, I would have loved that. Would like that would have been the coolest thing. Well, I say that, but I probably would have like freaked the fuck out if my toys started talking to me. So I'm, I guess. I'm sorry, I'm just. Yeah, I'm just like looking at all of these pictures of this bear. This, this is like <laughs> must have been a traumatic experience for me as a child because I completely like blacked out you, this bear. It's it's a memorable from, bear, from man. Memory. You have to the, say like that the, bear is scarier than Fox style, and Hound. Yeah, the animation style for this bear completely like breaks the form of the rest of it. Like he doesn't have any outlines. He's just got this red and blue lighting on him. Yeah, he just seems so ominous. It's like a silhouette. Yeah. Now, take the movie The Revenant and okay. take the take the bear scene and put that bear in place like animated. Oh, that's so yeah. it's like it's still like not a, as scary as the Balto bear, dude. Yeah, it's that's like it's like a Space Jam idea. thing. Yeah, it's like a it's yeah. like Space Jam, but with a bear attacking Leonardo DiCaprio and it's a cartoon <laughs> bear attacking him. The only bear I, that is yeah. slightly more terrifying is the bear from Winnie the Annihilation Pooh. and Winnie the Pooh. But I haven't seen Annihilation. I haven't Winnie seen the Pooh. Annihilation. There's sh- a bear in that though. You okay. should. So good, good to know. Yeah. Well, top top bear movies. Like, what's everybody's <laughs> top top five? What What's the one with the dude with have the, a bear with the raccoon? He has a raccoon hat. Davy Disney. Crockett. Yeah, the Davy Crockett like Disney movie that came out. I didn't know that Disney, Disney like, made a Davy Crockett movie. Davy Crockett fights a bear. Does he? Oh shit. Well, dude. I mean, it's like one shot, two shot. In the one shot, it's him going ah, and the second shot, it's the bear going ooh. It, they don't really, I don't think, ever legitimately fight. 
Oh, he's just kind of yelling at it? Yeah. Well, that's anticlimactic. Like, Davy Crockett's supposed to be this, like, crazy, like, backwoods hero. Okay. And do he just yells at a bear? He do doesn't, guys, like, kill it? Do you guys remember if Old Yeller helped fight off a bear? I think. Hmm. No, he fought He fought something off that had rabies, and then he got rabies, right? Right. Is that, and that's why he but had I don't to, know you know, if, take him out back. Yeah. And, then what dog fought off a bear? Was it, was it? Was Where it, the red fern grows, and it got, and the, that little dog? and the little dog got hurt, and then that's why it died, right? Wow. All I know is Redford Rose is just sad. Dude, I, so. cr- I read that in school and I cried. I cried my <laughs> eyes out in class. And I didn't want anyone to see, so I like put my head down on my desk. And I was like, <laughs> fuck, man. Like, why Why did you have to read so many books about dogs dying in school? Do you remember that? <laughs> like, there's yeah. like Old Yeller, Where the Red Fern Grows. Uh, there's another one where a dog dies. Because of when dixie Sounder. Sounder uh, is one that's really sad. A lot of race, r- racial tensions with that book. Yeah, when you say oh, sounder, sure. all, I, all I think about is the act of sounding. No, it's, like nothing, it's sounding. nothing. It's nothing like that. Just like the Seattle like soccer team, the Sounders, which my 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 uncle loves, and he always talks about the Sounders, and I, like I just laugh to myself, <laughs> which is very immature, of course. But I'm like, <laughs> oh, it makes me think of urethral sounding. Which for all you listeners, if you don't know mm. what that is, go look it up. I'm just kidding. I'm don't it up don't right do, now. Do you know what that look is? Any videos. Uh oh! Hmm. Look up sound there images. Nathan. I'm sure there's oh. images. Oh, yep, yeah, that's what that's what. Yeah, yeah. There you go. See, mm-hmm. you, you come on the podcast as a guest, Nathan, and you you, <laughs> you leave with some knowledge. You learn something. I'm, I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you for educating me. Hey, that's 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 what I'm here for, buddy. I'm, oh, I'm here boy. to open your eyes to all the wonders this world has to offer. Yeah, there seem to be like two modes bears can be in film and it's like horrible killing machines and then sound like pat paddington <laughs> yeah that's true there's no like in hey, between i saw the first paddington movie for the first time it's actually a legitimately f- nice light-hearted romp that i enjoyed is it sad i heard it's sad i heard uh, i mean there's or, sad or paddington there's like too. there's parts that are sad i haven't seen paddington 2 i only saw the first one i saw someone tweeting about uh paddington 2 and they're like that was that was like the saddest movie i've ever seen which brings oh, up wow. the, the most the hottest topic around. Nathan, what is the mm-hmm. first bear movie you cried to? Go. <laughs> first bear movie I cried to. Oh man. Um it might be the Winnie the Pooh movie. The one with the heffalumps? Or is that a different one? That uh hmm. Heffalumps Did, scared the shit out of me. They scared me yeah. too. You know, I yeah, feel like I, I feel scary. like I have some memory of crying to a Winnie the Pooh movie, but I don't remember. I just like when is I think of Winnie the, the Pooh, I feel sad. I don't know why. I'm thinking of like the search, the search for Christopher Robin is the one I'm thinking of. There might have been heffalumps in that one. Mm-hmm. I just remember there's like a lot of, uh, a lot of tension, a lot of um, sort of like uncertainty, and uh, and the, the the friendships are tested yeah, in it, that movie. It it was weird how they decided to go with the ending of actually not finding Christopher Robin. Yeah, and no, le- le- de- leaving it ambiguous for the audience <laughs> to decide whether he survived in the wilderness or not. Yeah, why did they? Right, it, that's so weird. And like, it's pretty, it's pretty like like you're certain that he died from like exposure in the wilderness. Like they they hinted that pretty. I mean, strongly. they found his shorts. So yeah, yeah like he did, he they, wasn't wearing pants. Like he died they, in the wilderness. <laughs> They test the ending. They tested the ending where they find just his mangled corpse. And it, didn't, it didn't do well. <laughs> didn't the, go well with the, the audience. Groups. Yeah. So. And, and then to, Winnie the Pooh opens his eyes. It like the camera revolves around and it shows this like huge monstrous bear with blood on its claws and it's all about <laughs> Pooh finding the true nature of his form. It's the, it's the same bear. It's the same bear from Balto. It's like the big it's twist. The, like 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 he can be this sweet bear, but he'll never be able to erase his true nature yeah. as this like oh, killing yeah. machine. Could you imagine yeah, the if they actually like... ended that movie, the search for Chris or the hunt for Christopher Robin? <laughs> the, hunt. the hunt for Christopher Robin sounds like they got like rifles and they're looking for him. <laughs> <laughs> no, like, uh, imagine if they had ended, like, the search for Christopher Robin where, like, like he just dies in the woods. And, like, they like they find him out there. And he's, they're, like, he's a little blue. Like, he's, like, he died from exposure out in the woods. Like, yeah, the, the cold, the like, North just... Dakota woods or wherever Winnie the Pooh <laughs> The Hundred Acre place. Woods, dude. Is that yeah, North acres. Dakota? It's got to be in North Dakota. <laughs> I think it's in a he's... book. I think they exist in a novel. Well, so does North Dakota. <laughs> I, okay, I've never been in North Dakota. I don't even know if it exists. That I could have. be one of those. I built houses. And have you you've been in North Dakota? I told you this. This is where I built. I thought that was South Dakota. No, it's North Dakota, where the big heads are. No, that's South Dakota. Well, big that's heads South, are Dakota. In South Dakota. No, well, we went to go see this the big heads, but we actually 
gave soup and built houses for people <laughs> who just wanted us out of their way. Can we start calling Mount Rushmore the big head? <laughs> the big head. It's a lot more true to what it is. Yeah. Yeah, it's not a mountain. I don't need to remember yeah. these people that badly. It's just that they're the big heads. And it, it, like, okay, you if you tell a foreigner, like, Mount Rushmore, they're going to be like, unless they've looked up what Mount Rushmore is, they're not going to know right. what it is. It's but if you tell a foreigner the big heads, they're like, oh, yeah, the big heads. I, I, I know exactly what that is. Right. What are the yeah, uh, there's what only are, one, the big heads. <laughs> what are other names for, for uh, I was about to say natural disasters, but that's not what they are. The, what are they called? The wonders of the world. Um, Monuments? Wonders, yeah. Well, most of them are pretty self-explanatory. Like, the pyramids are, like, pyramids, like they're pyramids. Sure. Yeah. And then, like, Hang, the Grand Canyon. gardens, yeah. They're, you know, gardens. It's, just, it's a Grand Canyon. Hanging. Yeah. Yeah, so it's really only, okay. Well, there, there's there's got to be some other like natural like, wonders that are or like monuments. I mean, Rushmore isn't a natural wonder. The it wasn't eroded perfectly like that. <laughs> Wait, you, what? Which would be fantastic. It wasn't man made. <laughs> it's uh, erosion, dude. God, High school. The hands of God came down. God's very patriotic for the <laughs> United sculpted. States, and he sculpted that with the, with wind over millions of years. Those were there before those presidents were even born. He was actually trying to give the like true view of Jesus and got it wrong every time and so he had to <laughs> he's like damn it that's not what he looks like what does he look like he can thought uh, he finally got yeah he got to Teddy Roosevelt and was just like ugh never mind forget it I'm waiting for the executive order to put Trump up with like Mount Rushmore like just stick him yep. to the side just like up there with those heads no just make a little tiny statue of him standing on all the heads <laughs> like at the top like yeah. on top just like mm. He has like when you he, there's a motion sensor, so like if anything crosses its path within like a hundred yards in front of it, it'll be like, mm, I love America. Mm. <laughs> That's all it does. <laughs> just a stupid voice. <laughs> yeah, he. It's just a little animatronic that like looks like it's made of stone, <laughs> but they but they film it real close up, so he's just like, yay. <laughs> <laughs> they hire one of those statue impersonators. Like, that's, like, painted gray. Yeah. Dude, those always freak me out. Man, I want to get, like, I, I want to petition to get some, like, old, like, politician you've forgotten about that no one really cares about to be, a, like, the next head of Mount Rushmore, like Michelle Bachman, and just, like, put her on Mount Rushmore where everyone's like, what is, what is she doing up there? <laughs> but it's, like, be like, she's bigger than all the rest of them. She stands out the most. It's, like, it's, like, the four heads and then Michelle Bachman. She's, like, the, the ringleader of the group on that mountain. There ain't no woman on the on the mountain. Yeah, we need, of we need we need we need we need a woman on Mount Rushmore. What do we do? Why and, is it all and dudes? That woman, of course, the spokesperson for all women, Michelle Bachman. <laughs> that's, the, that's the one we pick. I just want to marry oh, Michelle boy. Bachman. <laughs> if she's married, I, I want that marriage to end so I can sw sw swing on in there, man. Oh, I, I need me some Michelle Bachman in my life. <laughs> hey, be careful what you wish for; it just might come true. Hey, man. Wow. Yeah, why would I be careful I mean, about that Nathan wish? Nathan has some high up friends I know of. That... Nathan has friends in high places. <laughs> Nathan, could you organize a date with Michelle Bachman and me? Oh gosh, you know I'll I'll, I'll pull some strings. I'll oh, see what I can. Sounds like a non-answer. You know, the the uh, <laughs> I just I'm just pulling strings. I just have a drawer of strings, and I. And just he's like, this one's got to do something. Yeah, <laughs> where, he, where do these strings go? I don't know where. Little do you know you're part go. of a bomb squad division? <laughs> he pulls a uh, like a string, and then he finds out there's like some terrible bombing somewhere <laughs> in like Cincinnati, and he's like, that couldn't that couldn't have been me. So he pulls another one, and then there's like another bombing somewhere. He's like, shit. It's like it's like a death note in a drawer, and it's just it it just sets but it's bombs just strings. off. Strings. It's just strings and then death string. Just little yarn. Death just strings. little strings of yarn. You that know, would have like, been a lot more interesting if Death Note was just like instead of a book, he had a drawer of like just like colorful yarn, and he'd pull one, and it would do something funny somewhere. Like nothing even. <laughs> it, would deadly, a, like, it would make a clown a, a clown honk sound in like a random street, and everybody would go what? And he would like throw a pie in like an old man's face somewhere. Yeah, and then that would be it. Like there's no right. explanation. It's not like aha, this big this big uh, plot. That's being fleshed right. out. It's just a bunch there of. There is still like a special police task force to try and figure out who's making all of these silly things happen. <laughs> like, the world's gotten too silly too fast. <laughs> Someone must be behind it. Like people are slipping on banana peels. People are getting pied in the face. Like this is this is not okay. We Water's stop being this. squirted in people's faces. Out of little they think flowers. it's a flower. Yeah. They go up to it to smell it right in their fucking eye. Have you ever like have you have you ever been sprayed in the face by one of those little joke flowers? You're like. I haven't because I've never like had the yeah, opportunity no, to smell a flower like on I, someone's chest. I've ne no one's ever been like smoke. I don't know that I've ever, that I've ever seen one of those in real life. Like, I haven't I, either. They're, they're featured heavily in cartoons from like the 1920s and 30s, and then 
The closest uh, thing I've ever come to like seeing those things in real life is at like a uh, a Japanese uh, grill where they'll like cook in front of you and stuff, and then they have mm. the fake ketchup bottle. Then yep. squirt it at someone. They have that little tube that comes out. Yeah, it's like it's like it's like red yarn, and you squirt yeah. it, and it looks like ketchup flying out, and you're like, whoa, 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 and then you realize it's just and string, goes, and it goes gotcha. back. Right yeah, back in the bottle. That's one of my strings. That's I'm, one of the strings I pull. <laughs> I'm waiting for. I'm waiting bottle. for the time he just accidentally just squirts ketchup on someone. <laughs> or squ- <laughs> someone replaced the. <laughs> See now that's a, that's a prank on a prankster, and those are the best yeah. kinds of pranks. Or like, yeah. I'm I'm waiting for him to like do the whole catch the shrimp bit, except there's like a little bit of just boiling hot oil and water <laughs> just flying right behind the shrimp into someone's mouth. <gasps> We should have a hot grease drinking contest. <laughs> oh, perfect. Mm. I think that's like, I think if we want to get good views on this channel, hot oil drinking contest. Dude. Nathan, I, you want to be part of it? I can tell you, have, have you guys ever done like one of those um, like spicy pepper eating challenges or anything like that? Yeah, we were actually on a channel called Hot Pepper Gaming where we had to like review a game right after eating a habanero pepper. Yeah, and sometimes when you pepper. when you eat a pepper, it, it comes out the other end. Oh, speaking yeah. of coming out the other end. Oh, I I'm I about know. to shit my pants. All right, so. Ryan, Ryan's right. Okay, Nathan, it's just going to be you and me for a little bit cuz Ryan's got a I got another emergency. Ryan's having some form of crisis right now. Wow. Ryan, okay. what Ryan, what if this was like a live podcast and you were on stage right now? Would you have to just get up and leave? 100%. I'm not going to shit my pants on stage. All right. Well, so uh, do we do we continue? Do you edit this or do we just continue? No, no, we continue, Nathan. This is this we is continue uncut. on because okay, I mean you. Is um. What's the topic, Ryan? Uh, race relations. Oh, we're not talking about that. Um. Good. Well, we've that, got we that, talked about Trump, Michelle Bachman, and now race relations is good. This is. <laughs> yeah, this is great. This is the type perfect. of uh, professionalism that you come to expect on this podcast, Ryan. Yeah. Uh, you know. Is you know trying to get diapers for him. He refuses to wear them. But here we are. Uh, now it's just a, a podcast with a uh, with your boy Matt Watson. Got Nathan Hi. here. Got Nathan. Yeah. Um, I really you know. It's a it, good thing I got off of Ryan's shoulder before he uh, he went to the bathroom. Yeah, that would have been a bad over. thing if he took if he took you with him by accident. Yeah. We have another small um, friend. He did that once, that, and it was not fun for the no, for the they, small person. He probably probably didn't appreciate that very much. Um, but yeah, I mean, I I remember when. Drawfee was was but a wee a wee little channel, uh, a me a me of a channel. Uh, I I ate a ghost pepper, uh, on uh, in in order to to try and <laughs> get more views and subscribers. And um, yeah, it does. It comes out the other end, and uh, I would say that part's worse. I would actually agree with that because after I ate that yeah. uh, habanero, I was I I experienced that, and it was not fun in the slightest. It's it's I, remember, I, I would say it is worse yeah it, it's like a yeah at at the time Caldwell was my boss and so he told me uh, I didn't have to come in the next day and I was like what the worst part's over I'll be fine and then I just remember waking up the next morning just like oh no it hits you man it's oh, like it's man. like you'll be fine and then it's like someone stabbed a dagger into your abdomen and you're like this right. is not fun and then right. and then what yeah. follows is is really not fun. Just sort of face down in the shower, crying. Yeah, absolutely. To, you need like cold like, water all over your body. Yeah, Ryan, yep, Ryan yep. is back. I don't know how you completed that, that task quick. that quickly. That was, Slippery, was a, fast, ready to move. I'm back. I was ready to go. All right, Ryan. Well, uh, welcome back to the podcast, Ryan. Was, we, did uh, I interrupt something? No, no, no. We're just talking about eating hot peppers. Oh yeah, yeah, it's fun. You 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 de- you kind of develop a a lust for peppers. You do. Like uh, we work uh, in our office. Uh, we have a friend that works with us named Vernon, and he's like the pepper guy. And he uh, he loves he loves peppers. He's got a huge hot sauce collection. Um, he was the guy that ran that channel, Hot Pepper Gaming, that we went on. And he um he can just like just eat just peppers like 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 it's nothing. Like he's wow. he if you name a spicy pepper, he's tried it. He's had a Carolina Reaper, um, which wow. is wow. The the hottest pepper in existence, I believe, and someone actually mailed us to our PO box a couple of those, um, which we have not eaten yet. I don't know if we will, um, because I feel like with certain peppers, like you can actually end up going to the hospital. Uh, right. Which yeah, if your I, body's I, not ready for it. Yeah. I mean, I, I, <laughs> I just had the one little the one little ghost pepper, and that was enough to put me out of commission for a day. I Oof. don't know, I don't know how much uh, how much more my body would have been able to take. Yeah. But it's interesting, like the ghost pepper, it the flavor of it is it tastes very similar to paprika. 
Really? And yeah, it's like papi- pa- uh, it's like paprika plus pain is oh. the is the flavor. Um, so it's anytime something tastes strongly of paprika, I'm just you I, like PTSD. I get a little, yeah, a little little flashback <laughs> happens. I'm like, uh-oh. Could you imagine being like a big old hairy fucking caveman just trying to hunt and gather shit? And all of a sudden you pick up this delicious looking pepper Peppers thing. Peppers look delicious. And, and you take a bite yeah. and it just ruins your day. It really just <laughs> ruins your day. Like, yeah, cause you don't, you don't get to call in sick from no. hunting. You don't get to <laughs> you eat. You still have to go out to the big mammoth hunt at six o'clock. Yeah. Like, like you can't be like, sorry guys, I gotta sit this one out. Like, cause you, you will die. Like, and seriously, yeah. like, if, if I was a caveman and I saw a bunch of peppers growing, like, they look like candy, man. They look oh, yeah. delicious. Yeah. Like, like you look at a pepper, it's bright colored. Honestly, like, way back in the day, if you saw it, it probably looks poisonous. I wouldn't have eaten it. Well, yeah, usually bright colors is, like, a warning for poisonous stuff. Like, I know that's why it's, like, a lot of frogs are like, hey, look at me. Yeah. I'm poisonous. Exactly. And then, like, when right. you when you take a bite, you would immediately be like, this is definitely poison because my mouth might, I'm, I'm going to die. I'd, if I was a caveman and I took a bite of a pepper, I would think that I was dying. Yeah. Because I'm like, this shouldn't be happening. I'd, like, give my last words to my, like, son and like my wife and my unborn cave daughter, and <laughs> right. and then I just look like a big old wuss you at the end of the day. Tears coming out of your eyes, just just sweating, tearing. Yeah, just snot. Yeah, man. Ryan just ate a fucking pepper out there in the wilderness, and he said his goodbyes, and then shit his pants, and now he's back leading the leading the big old mammoth hunt. So yeah, that'd be embarrassing. You have to be like, <laughs> just don't t- don't tell anyone about this, all right? And also on top of like, um, you know, like the thing about. Like, what's the evolutionary benefit of peppers being spicy? Is it so they don't die, they don't get eaten? Like, what? Like, what's the point? Like, you know, hmm. like they had to have evolved to be spicy for a reason, right? Uh, why are peppers hot? You're gonna be like, <laughs> because of capsaicin. Yeah, capsaicin. capsaicin. Right. We, yep. <laughs> oh man, we have some hot sauce here at the office called Flashbang, and it's like. 2.5 or 3 million Scoville units, which Scoville units are like the measurement of spiciness. I think a habanero is 150,000 to 300,000. Yeah. And this is 2.5 million to 3 million, this sauce. Oof. And a, a music video Ryan and I did called My Two Lovely Uncles. Um, there's a part where I'm I'm in tears in that video. And in order to get realistic tears, I had to dip the corner, like one little prong of a fork in this hot sauce, just barely dip it and then touch it to my tongue. Well, it's the perfect method. I I like... I did that when we, uh, Daniel and I were shooting a Syndigo video and I had to cry at this graveyard. Oh, yeah. And so, like, just the way something spicy affects you, it makes your face red, y- your eyes water. Yeah. Y- you, like, just become very, just, like, sniffly. And so, y- you can, if you can act cry, then it, and, and you can't really nail the presentation down. Yeah, and, uh, just eat a pepper. That's that's my advice. If you combine like good crying acting with uh, the effects of something spicy, you have perfect crying. Um, like you got it down, and it's not fun to be honest. Like when we were shooting that video, um, mm-hmm. I was I was in front of the green screen, and and my mouth was my mouth and my throat, and my lips were burning, and I was right. just you were there, Ryan. You remember? Yeah, I was yeah, not yeah. having fun. Why learn how to act cry when you can just torture real cry? Yeah, yeah. yeah, you can you can cry real tears, but it looks great. Like it, it looks it like you can't really beat it. It looks authentic because yeah. you know your face gets red. You know, like what you said, and um. It really, uh, it's not something I, I would do again. I actually had to do it twice for the video. And the, I don't know if you remember the second time, I had a little more. And um, I started going like numb in my hands and my feet. And I started yeah. freaking out because I thought I was having like an allergic reaction. And we had to stop filming oh, for a little dang. bit. And I had to like sit down on the floor. I guess you can chalk it up to being a little wimp. But it was uh, yeah. the numbing of yeah, the I extremities. I didn't realize I was coming on the podcast with uh, such, a, such a little wimp. Such but, Nathan? Uh, such a big old yeah. baby. Hmm? <laughs> Nathan? <laughs> Just a big little baby. That's all I'm saying. Nathan, are you are you, are you in are you in New York? Is that where you're located? I I am. Yeah. I will fly to New York to teach you a lesson. <laughs> okay. One on one in the ring in the octagon. <laughs> oh boy, but I'm I'm so. Wait, I'm I'm in New York, but I'm also on your shoulder. Uh, we've got we've got a lot of head cannon going for this episode. Nathan has a yep. split soul. He he's able to have a small version like, of himself, like here. his Holy Spirit. Yeah. Right. Exactly. So it's Nathan's like here. He's yeah. on my shoulder. But my homunculus. The, the 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 hub Nathan, like the real Nathan that the small version returns to, is in New York City. Yeah. Yeah. Perfect. Got it. We got we yep, got this yep. backstory down. I have a question. Every, yeah. For mm-hmm. you, my boy, who lives in New York. I've never been to New York. 
Never ever? Never ever ever. You wow. living there and not just being from the tourist state of mind, as mm-hmm. a tourist in New York, what should I actually pay attention to and go see, and what are some good eateries around the area, places to eat that I you actually, would recommend? I think. I asked Nathan, not you, man. Well, I'm just saying. Well, I mean. Okay. Just... <laughs> sure. <laughs> no, why don't, why don't you fill this one? Actually? I was just going to yeah, say, uh... like, I think as a tourist, just take a picture of every taxi you see. I think, yeah, uh, like as a tour, like I can tell you uh, just my experience observing tourists, they really like like a good thing to do as a tourist, have have a bunch of other friends with you and sort of try and stand shoulder to shoulder, take up as much uh, horizontal space on the sidewalk as you can (laughs) and just and just just stop every so often. Can, just like stop and wait, look around. Wait, and just can be we? Like, well, can we? Can we like link arm in arm and like pretend we're in some like f- fun teen fantasy movie oh, where we're sure, all like having sure, a good yeah. time and we're like we're only looking through the perception of our selfishness and not anyone right. else's uh, right, right, right. wants and needs. So. Yeah, just a real slow sort of frolic or skip down the down the boulevard. Um, lots of, I mean, get gear gear up. Get a lot of Hamilton gear. <laughs> uh, a lot of I Heart NY stuff. Oh, you need the um, I Heart NY shirt. You need that. A large, a large backpack. Your large um, backpack. Uh, don't take the backpack off when you're on the subway. Keep it on. Oh, the subway. Bump, New York. I'm at, I've actually several episodes of this podcast. I have talked about the New York subway, so I'm sure the viewers uh, know my opinion on it. It's gross. Should, it's pretty gross. I mean, should I go up to the Statue hmm. of Liberty and like with my 30 friends that I have and each take a picture of us pretending like we're holding the statue. That's oh, a great that's idea. Fun. Yeah. That's real fun. Yeah. 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 That's, that's a fun, that's a fun little, uh, gimmick. You could also, uh, if you've got 30 friends, you could all try like stacking up on each other's shoulders and reach the top of the statue. See if of you Liberty. can reach the top. Yeah. yeah like you're high fiving the statue. Yeah, of yeah. Oh yeah. But in real life. Yeah. That'd be fantastic. I've never been to the, I mean, I've seen it, but it's on an Island. So I never went to it. It's like I was yeah, like, oh, can, there's the Statue take, of Liberty. Well, this is just a real, a real tip: is you can take the Staten Island ferry. Uh, that's free, and you can just go. It, it takes you out. You get to see the skyline. You get to see the Statue of Liberty, and then you're in Staten Island. I'm a and fool. Then you can take the ferry, take the ferry back. I didn't know that. Uh, you're a yeah. damn fool, man. I'm a damn. Mama Look, raised a damn fool, I guess. Nathan, how long have you been living in New York? Uh, I guess about six years now. So you, uh, when, when did they stop? Was that after 9-11 when they stopped letting people in and, like, going up? Or do they still allow people to go up into the Statue of Liberty? Uh, I ha- I don't know. I've I've never been up there. Could you could you go and ask for us real quick? I'll go. Yeah, let me go. We'll just, wait. Just, just go yeah. <laughs> we'll just pause okay. the podcast. We'll wait. Yeah, just, you, no, you guys keep, t- it'll be like when uh, when you went to the bathroom. I'll just go. You keep you keep talking. Except it'll, uh, it'll be, like, two hours before you get back. I'd say probably more with New York City traffic and stuff. I don't know. Yeah, well, because yeah, and I, I am very little, as we've established. So <laughs> That's gonna me, take a lot of steps. A longer. I got to take a lot of steps. Yeah, uh, but uh, you know, I get my step count up. Hey so. man, you can yeah. hitchhike on someone's skateboard or like sprawl out on their bike, and so you're spinning really fast. That would be terrifying. <laughs> <laughs> if I was small and like was <laughs> on like, a, like a bicycle spoke, that would be terrifying. I can't think of yeah. anything that would like be more uncomfortable. It's like a little every day is like going to an amusement park. When you're a little, oh like man, a little guy. Yeah. Did, did you guys ever like put like a like a playing <laughs> oh card God. in your in your bicycle tire? So when you when you drove your bicycle, it sounded like a motorcycle. <laughs> I never did that. No, I just said when you drive your bicycle. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna go drive my bicycle. <laughs> yeah, of course you're going you out dr- for a short drive. On my bike. See you, see you later, losers. <laughs> When I when I just um when you said you know when you're small every day is like an amusement park ride I I just like pictured like this faux news article of like talking mm-hmm. about little people and like one of the big quotes they have you know how they like make quotes big and bold in the middle of the article <laughs> yeah like the ones that stand yeah. out when you're small every day is just like an amusement park <laughs> ride <laughs> and again we're not we're not talking about uh like actual little people we're talking about fantastically yeah. small. Uh, like really you know, small, like pint-sized. Yeah. And, and I'm I'm proud of you, Nathan. You used the correct vernacular in it right there. You, you weren't offensive, by the way. Just letting you know. L- Thank you. L- little person is the way to go. Nathan, I give you mm-hmm. a small pat on the back with my with my index finger. Oh, thank you. Yeah, it's very strong. You have a very strong index finger. I thank you. I've been that. I've been working out my hands specifically. Strong yet tender. 
I've been wondering, like, can I, can, if I want to get, like, strong hands, can I, like, work out my hands? Yeah, with that thing that, like, a bunch of men used to have. I hate that thing, like, man. They're, they're the perfect device for uncles. Like, I think every yeah. uncle I have <laughs> had one of those. You know exactly what I'm talking about. Yeah, like, yeah, he sits and watches TV. One. And <laughs> yeah. is, you're, you know, in the delivery room with your with your family, and uh, the doctor comes out and it's like, it's a boy. Uh, you're, are you the uncle? Here you go. <laughs> Start <laughs> squeezing. Oh. Man, like, like the, that's, the hands The hands are one of those, like, you know, people go to the gym, they have leg day, they have at, like, core day. I, they mm-hmm. need to, like, people need to start paying attention, like, like oh, man, it's hand day. Or, like, it's your, jaw day. Your hands are important. You get a little slit on your on your palm, your hand's not going to be as useful as it was. No, it's going to be for, big like, ouchie. For, a few weeks. No. Like, any hand injury is a significantly long, like, long-lasting injury because your hands are so dainty. I'm They're gonna, not really protected well. Uh, yeah, for being so useful. We need we and need like an you, exoskeleton on our hands. Yeah, and you draw all the time. So how does it feel that your little dainty hands are flapping in the wind all the time? <laughs> yeah, Nathan, little dainty hands. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, I have to I have to bundle them up before I. Do you wear I go mittens constantly? Yeah. What? You wear mittens constantly, right? Yeah, I wear mittens. Um, uh, several layers of mittens. Uh, at all times, I'm either I'm either drawing or wearing mittens are are my two modes. Mittens uh, are like no probably between. the most like uh, in in terms of like useful like the least useful thing you could possibly own. Excuse me. Like why not gloves? Where you could, like you yeah? It, but what it about renders those? your your fingers like inept when you wear mittens. It's like oh, but they're more not cushiony. Be... You can still grab you, onto things. You can you get cushiony gloves. What do you what do you need gloves for? Because I can use my digits while yeah, keeping my yeah, hands. Yeah, but like your digits form a form a mitten when you grab things. I'm not so gummy. it's already you, you're you're already a mitten. That turns that turns me into gummy if I wear mittens because then I just have I have. It's two still large... the same grasp as you would. Look at this. Look at the form as if I was grabbing a yeah, cup. But that's can... a mitten form. Yeah, that's for grabbing a cup, Ryan. What if I need to like do grab, stuff what, like what this? What else do you need? Why would you need? What if to I need to type fingers? when I'm wearing mittens? You what if can't I can't see what he's writer? doing right now, Nathan? But he's like, ooh. Look. What, you, because you use your fingers. Why do you fingers? need to use, Why are you wearing mittens in an indoor like establishment? If it's a cold, you know, one of those cold rooms for to keep the co- the computers cold. Exactly. I I think the chances of you, <laughs> do, you gotta doing get your special editing typing gloves. Yeah. The chances of you doing your editing in a Ralph's freezer is very low. You don't know my life. <laughs> you don't know what I could be doing a year from now. You just want to be prepared. I understand. But that's um, the thing. It's like mittens it's, all yeah. the way, dude. Mitt. I'm yes, mittens. they're they're comfortable. Mittens are comfortable. I do have to say, but it's basically like wearing oven mitts everywhere. It's then like get those mittens where you take them off, and then. But then your gloves. fingers are gonna be cold. That what defeats you, the purpose. What are you talking about? If you take it off, your then fingers are still ex- glo- there's still gloves underneath. Oh, I thought you were talking about the type where you just like open it and your fingers are exposed. No, just the tops of your fingers. Well, then they're getting cold. Oh, it's that not even that the purpose. bad. Oh, then just wear gloves. <laughs> You're just, it solves the problem if you just wear gloves. Baby. I'm not a big baby. Big it baby. solves the problem if you just wear gloves. Because then, baby. then your digits can work like they're supposed to, and you keep your hands warm at the same time, and you don't have to convert your mittens into a, some special thing where your fingers are exposed to the elements. Oh, I'm 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 sorry. Wearing mittens is too much of a task for you, Matt. It's. It's it adds one little extra step. <laughs> I'm sorry, Nathan. This is this is I I love that this is what has gotten the most heated debate uh, <laughs> on the show is mittens versus gloves. I'm pissed off. I think this is important. I think I, do the commenters ever weigh in? Like, yeah, on, uh, absolutely. I would like all gonna like, side like, with Matt. Are you, are you Why would, they, they always side with you? Why would they side with me? Team gloves. All right, guys. Hashtag gloves or, or team gloves or team mittens. Like we need to put yeah. into this. Nathan, Nathan what we, about what, what are you? What are you? Are you are you a mitten glove hybrid? Are you a mittens person? Are you a gloves person? I I'm I mean like as as we've established again in the head canon uh, we've established on this episode I I wear several layers of mittens because I'm not <laughs> yeah I'm either I I either need my hands unfettered completely or or fully protected so I'm not I'm not trying to perform any tasks. Uh, in the outside world, you're a mitten man with with gloves. You're a mitten yeah, made I, man. I'm shaking my head right now. I'm si- <laughs> I'm silent. I'm shaking my head in disapproval, Nathan. I'm going. Mm, I put mm, I put mm. uh I, I put on a glove and then I put on a mitten over the glove and then I put my gloved mitten hand in my pocket and I do not remove it until I am at my destination. That sounds actually really comfortable and very warm. Like if you yeah. lived in like Siberia, that sounds fantastic. Yeah. 
You could even put one of those little like like hand warmer things in there, which I bought one oh, recently sure. and put like it in my shoes. Oh, for sure. Like what use? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was in I was in uh I, I was at Mount Fuji and, and it was very cold, so I put one of those warmers in my shoe and it just did not work. And then my toes were oh, still very cold. How was Mount Fuji? It was wonderful. It was great. It's beautiful. It's a I big wanna, old mountain. I want to travel. Yeah. That's I looked cool. and I was like, that's a that's a big that's a big hill. That's a big that's mountain a big right hill. there. That's, a... that's how Ryan described it. He was like, it's just a big hill, and it is. That's all it is. <laughs> It is. is it a Two mount, a mountains just came a big together. Hill. They went and created this fucking big hill. It's where the Earth's huge. huge. Two two plates kissed each other and then created a little baby. And that's yeah. that's that's where it sits. You know, I I did not realize before uh, agreeing to do this just how educational of a of a program I was I was coming on. I would have hey, done some research. I would have I would have gotten some factoids. Hey, Amen. Have you ever felt uh, tectonic plate shifting, Nathan? <laughs> Um, no, there was one, there was an earthquake, I went to the University of Maryland, and there was an earthquake in Maryland, um, while I was there, and I slept through it, and so I woke up and went on Facebook, and everybody was like, holy shit, did you feel that? Like, every post was about the earthquake that had just happened, I was like, I don't know what, I don't know what's going on. That happens to me every time, I want to feel an earthquake, but I never do. (laughs) Have you ever felt one? I don't know. They're cool. I do have to say, I felt Ryan in the last month. I have felt two semi-large earthquakes just uh, in the last month. In the, in Glendale, one in Tokyo, one in Glendale. Like oh, Glen- wow. like there was actually like a pretty. It felt like two shotgun blasts. I was sitting uh, on the couch at two a.m. at a friend's house, and it went. <laughs> this was <laughs> wait in Glendale. Okay, you were out of town. Ah, oh, you were you were you were in like the Bay Area, I think. But Gosh, it was darn it. Yeah, you always seem to just miss it. Like, you, you, it's always, like, right when you go out of town, which every time I go out of town, it rains in Los Angeles, and I love the rain. It's, like, the day after I, I leave town, God's like, hey, should c- come to New York. We got plenty. I, there's no rain in Los Angeles minus <laughs> two days ago when it rained. Imagine the weird show. You know how they have tornado hunters? Imagine, like, an earthquake hunters, but you can't actually predict earthquakes at all, really. So it's just them going, yep. Maybe, maybe here. Not this episode. They mm-hmm. just they just go mm-hmm. and, like, like sit <laughs> Near the San Andreas Fault with like a microphone, like <laughs> yeah. maybe it'll happen. Maybe. Each episode just all of a sudden there's like a little. Oh, 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 oh. Was that? Measure oh, that? No, that? Did you measure that? Phone. Oh, yep. that was just my phone. I think yep. it's Sorry. just a plane. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine just one where they're just chasing like like rainstorms, just like they, like like they're like, is that thunder? Oh, rain, rain, rain! No, get, no, like yeah, really <laughs> people people chasing rain in Los Angeles. That's. <laughs> Just the no, most I would, mundane. I would love yeah. to be a part of that. I just like I want rain. I like Los Angeles would be perfect to me if there were two things. If there was more rain and less traffic. What are rain tornadoes? Why called? do you? Uh, you know what I mean, what are the what are those called? There's rain tornadoes. Yeah, there's like they happened uh, on Lake Murray every now. And oh, then. water spouts. Yeah, water rain spouts. tornadoes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know the name. Those, That's why I was asking. Those wet tornadoes. Wet tornadoes. That they should be called wet tornadoes instead of water spouts. That's it, such a yeah. good name. Because then they will have like dust cyclones. Whatever du- they're called. dust devils, dust devils. Hey, dust cyclone. That's a per. That's exactly what it is. That's yeah. what it is. That's du- a more technical dust name devil, than dust devil. Not to be confused with dirt devil. Which no, is just an ex- excellent product. Um, or the Tasmanian devil. devil. Or the Tasmanian devil. Well, he kind of he's closer to uh, to a dust devil because he does have the tornado bottom. He's like, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> imagine like the Tasmanian like devil on a radio interview like back in like 1987, and he says something real, real bad, and now he just he's out of the spotlight now because he's like, I don't want to bring attention to myself because that's definitely gonna eventually come out and ruin my career. I, I just I want to see more of him. I like his character design. I like his character in your, general. Your impression was fantastic. Thank you. Could you do it yeah, again it was for pretty, me? It was, I thought it, he was well, in the studio just yeah. based on the the sound. Yeah. I thought I was watching Looney Tunes. Yeah. <laughs> Do you it might, for me, Ryan. Might have been, I mean, do it for me. Are you ready? Yeah. Ready for the uh, Tasmanian uh, Tiger Devil? Tasmanian Tiger Devil? I'm yeah. ready for it, man. Okay, ready? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Hold on one second, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> he's, gotta, he's, he's gotta hype himself now, up. Now, what do you want out of him? Like, what emotion do you think I should I should portray? Passion, Ryan. Passion? Passion. Like, yeah, like, like, like sexual passion, Nathan? It could be sexual. That's up to Nathan. Be, like... Just like a passion for a project, like a summer workshop or something. <laughs> Building, fixing up a car with his old man. Yeah. <laughs> well, or yeah, you could even like, combine uh, those two. That, that scene in Space Jam where he cleans up the gym for everybody. Oh, okay, okay. So I'm, I'm channeling kind of like an inner passion of cleanliness. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, okay, here we go. Funny, 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 funny noise. Blah, blah, there we go. There it is. Holy shit. Okay, I just had the, there it is. 
Thank if you, you. If you can't see it right now, audience, but Nathan is fully naked cheering in our Skype call. I Nathan, just, put I some did, clothes I on, buddy. Very, I very slowly took off my clothes, and now I didn't I even am... I didn't even notice it. I just looked, and you were naked. I. <laughs> you have a yeah. nice you have a nice chiseled form. It's, it's like it was nice sculpted by God Himself. Actually, I'm in really I'm in the Skype call now. I'm in I'm not the little ver. It's. <laughs> We've got well, a lot of your little lot of version versions of me Skype floating around. Us, but, yeah, yeah. But you, it's like it's a duo thing. You got little right. version you Skyping and little version you here in person, just in case he needs to bat us around a little bit. If yes. we're not, if we're not treating you fairly, I'm so the, what, confused. The one that is in person with you guys is fully clothed. I would never disrobe uh, in person without well, without affirmative consent. We are giving you um, con- uh, affirmative consent right now. Okay, that if you'd like to disrobe, there, you can take it off, Nathan. There go my pants. Oh, They're there's. Gone. There's there's his little penis. That's a small. Well, I'm only I'm only, <laughs> only saying because little small. because it's small. proportionate. It's, it's, it's yeah. proportionate. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's, a, it's that's a little proportionate. Pe- well, that's a proportionate penis. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. it's not a little proportionate penis. But like well, it the is, adjective I personally it. would use because I'm of normal, uh, I guess status, human status, <laughs> would mm-hmm. be a little penis. But just average. Yeah. yeah. It's average penis. Yeah. It's an average. It's an average guy. We got. Imagine Good. if, like, <laughs> on your driver's license, you had to list your penis size. I'm s- <laughs> like, what a world! I'm, what a world yeah. we would live in if that was. Yeah, put, like, it's, it's like the sizes, the <laughs> but you get to choose the adjective you want to use for it. It's not like it's not a measurement. It's just uh, petite, uh, <laughs> petite, s- what? small, b- uh, sub-average. You have to go into average, coffee sizes. Yeah, venti, tall, tall, venti. Yeah, you get to choose your own scale. <laughs> like petite, petite, such a. Good I've never one. heard a penis described as petite, but that's like <laughs> that. Just it, it, just it, go to France. <laughs> fun, fun size. Oh, that's great. That is that's a fantastic way. From now on, I'm gonna only describe my penis as petite to people. Like, like, like. So what you packing? Like, you saw petite rose penis. This is, this is my uh, this is my little petite pecker. Just said it was a. Well, I think I just oh, said it was boy. a is a small pink penis. Does or rose does, mean is pink rose pink or red? I can't remember. In French, I took French lessons in elementary school here. Okay, rose is re- probably red because, like, in Spanish, it's 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 ro- roja. Okay, is that how you say? <sighs> Nathan, help! You speak Spanish. I do. I don't. <laughs> don't. Why did you <laughs> tell told, us you spoke Spanish told, before the podcast we've told started? We've so many lies. <laughs> that's our podcast, Nathan. That's episode. our. That's all our podcast uh, is. Oh yeah, I speak. Uh, yeah, Spanish. Uh, red is roja. I think yeah. it's roja. Right? Yeah. Spanish speakers in the comments, back me up on this one, even if I'm wrong. Ro- just just help Ro- it from my Rojo. self-esteem. Rojo? Rojo. Maybe Sounds like a Pokemon. Ro- okay. It was... So what, what's it in French? We're just making uh, them look up. Come on. Come on, boy. Comes. Nathan's our here little, like, monkey here helper here to look things up. Ru- <laughs> Rouge. Rouge, not rose. What's rose? Is rose something? Rose is a flower. I thought rose was something in French. <laughs> it's probably not. It's probably pronounced <laughs> like wolves. <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking it up. Rouge, Rouge is that sexy character from Sonic. Yeah, it yeah, is Rouge, pink. Rouge of the Bat. Hey, Rose yo, yeah. is the color halfway between red and magenta. Well, yeah, duh. But like, but in French, but in French is a fucking. Go on Google English. Translate. Type, type Rose. Yeah, pink is Rose. Boom. boom oh, right yeah, there. yeah. I just solved it, Nathan. I solved it. The mystery has been solved, Nathan. Pink, pink in French is Rose. Yeah, I like that. That makes sense. Because a rose is, well, roses are red. Violets are blue. This podcast is ending. Nathan, thank you. We love you. you. Oh. Well, we also do love you, Nathan. Nathan. Wow, this was, <laughs> th- this was, the, this was the edgiest conversation I think I've, I've ever had outside of our uh, Cards Against Humanity episodes. Of, hey, man. Uh, of Drawfee, So Glad, glad we, could, we could supply you with, you know, with that. Glad we, got, we get to talk about uh, penises, yeah. and bears, and... Uh, and <laughs> Michelle Bachman. Somehow. This is the Serrated Edge podcast. <laughs> yeah, this is the Steak Knife podcast. <laughs> well, Nathan, uh, yeah. thank you so much for coming on, man. Where can where can people find you? Uh, you can find me on uh, on Twitter. I don't tweet a lot, but I am at at Nathan Yaffe. That's the word at Nathan Yaffe <laughs> on there. But more importantly, uh, Drawfee on YouTube. It's uh, it's the YouTube channel. That I run uh, with a bunch of my uh, fun illustrator friends here uh, at College Humor in Dorkley, and um, we take dumb ideas, we make even dumber drawings. Uh, we had you guys on recently, and uh, that was a real treat. And we've we've been having a lot of uh, guests on 
lately. So, you know, maybe maybe you'll find uh, an episode with someone whose name you recognize and uh, start there and uh, start exploring our, our catalog uh, of content. Yeah, and you all and I think you mentioned you also had was it a D and D? Oh my show? my my co host Caldwell has a has a D and D show oh, yeah. uh, okay. called oh. not not another D and D podcast. You can listen to that. Maybe I'll be on plug that. Him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, let's yeah. let's let's we'll just bleep that out. So yeah. I, I got that <laughs> I got that mixed up. We don't want to give him any credit because he did not show up. Yeah, no, he did not no, come on our to, podcast. We said we said to Caldwell, to his, please come on our podcast, and he was like, his no. job at Disney. He said you have less subscribers than my YouTube channel. I'm not coming on your stupid show. And I was like, all right, well. He did. He got very offended that we would even suggest that. I was, I was like, want to come on? We're not. We're uh, not like that small. But I guess he just didn't want to. He, he wouldn't do it. So. Not as small as he said, Nathan. He said, Nathan's Nathan, a... you're a small. You're a small sized person. So you should go on this small sized YouTube channel. Not as petite uh, as Nathan. Yes. <laughs> From now on, when I hear the word petite, I'm gonna only think of it in terms of penis size. So. Well, it Thank starts you for that, with Nathan. the same. You've, you've altered the my... same two letters. So that's that's you know, true. That's, that's true. That's yeah. true. Just so- association there. Um, good. Well, yeah. Uh, thank you so much for coming on, Nathan. Uh, everyone, check out. Links are in the description for, for Nathan and his stuff and his channel. Uh, yeah. We love you. It's been a very fun experience. And uh, go check out our Drawfee episode on that channel. Um, yeah. Very, very fun stuff. Link we did. is also in the description. Uh, yes. And uh, thank you to our sponsor. Insert sponsor name here. Thank you so much. Uh, you can oh, check us out on sponsor. iTunes. Yeah, fantastic sponsor. You can get our podcast on iTunes. Our sponsor, come on, come on. I hope, I hope, I hope everyone is 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 clapping uh, at home along with us. But thanks so much, guys. We will see you next week. Bye.